Hello! In this video, I will be discussing a combinatorics topic known as stars and bars technique. I'm not sure why or how, but this has gained some popularity in local math contests recently. In the past, this was also known as urns and balls or sticks and stones. To introduce this technique, let us consider this problem. Suppose you intend to pick three stars from a basket consists of red and blue stars. How many different sets of stars can you get? Assume that there are at least three red stars and three blue stars in the basket. This introductory problem comes in many variants. You may be getting from a set of different colors of balls or you may be buying from a store with different types of donuts. In any case, the statement of the problem is pretty straightforward and the solution doesn't really need much of higher maths. If we want three stars consists of either red or blue, we can have a set of three blue stars, two blue and one red, one blue and two red, or all three reds. Therefore, we have four possible sets. Clearly, writing the solutions for this problem is not that difficult. However, just imagine if the problem instead asks for the number of possible sets if you are getting 20 stars from a basket of, say, the seven rainbow colors. I don't think it's practical to write them all. At this point, I'd like to introduce the notion of bars. Given the set of stars earlier, a bar is an object that will divide the stars into groups. Note that if we wish to divide a set into R groups, then we need r minus 1 bars. For example, if we place a bar in between the second and the third bar, we have divided the stars into two groups, which consists of two stars and the other with one star. Without loss of generality, let's say that the left uh, of the bar is colored blue and that of the right is colored red. Thus, we have the solution two blue stars and one red star. Let's denote this solution as the coordinate to 1. Essentially, the placement of the bar directs us to a solution to the problem. In terms of bars, we can have the other solutions we, which we found earlier by placing the bar elsewhere. By placing it at the end of the three stars, we have the solution 3, 0. If we place it between the first and the second, we have the solution 1, 2. And lastly, if we place it at the front, we have the solution 0, 3. This gives a total of 4 solutions. To further illustrate the use of bars, let's consider an upgrade of the problem. Let's say we're still looking for 3 stars, but this time we have 3 possible colors, red, blue, and green. Since we want to divide the three stars into three groups, we need three minus one or two bars. Let's say we place the first bar between the first and second star, and then the second bar in between the second and the third star. Again, without loss of generality, let us consider the leftmost group as the blue stars, and then the middle group as red, and the rightmost as green. We thus have the solution one blue, one red, and one green. Let's denote this coordinate again as 1, 1, 1. We can search all the other solutions by placing the two bars in different positions. I have listed the solutions as shown here. Based on this list, we have 10 possible sets for this problem. Considering the two illustrations, I think it's safe to say that the number of solutions for this problem is equal to the number of positions that the bars can occupy. This is the method of stars and bars. Essentially, we are determining the number of possible groupings of the stars by placing the bars in between the stars. So the question that stands now is, how do we count the number of placements of the bars? In illustration 1, we can place the bars in 4 slots. Why 4 slots? Because although we are looking at the number of placement of bars, 
we also have to put the stars somewhere. Since we have 3 stars and 1 bar, 4 slots are needed overall. By the idea of combinations, the total number of ways we can place 1 bar in 4 slots is equal to 4 taken 1, which is 4. Note that instead of viewing this in the perspective of placing the bars, we can also think of the finding the number of positions of the stars, which in this case is 4 taken 3. Of course, the answer is 4 regardless of the perspective we pick. The similar reasoning, in the, in the second illustration, we can place the bar in 5 slots, 3 from the stars and 2 from the bars. The total number of placements of the bar is equal to 5 taken 2, which is 10, which is aligned to what we got earlier. So in general, if we intend to divide a set of R stars into N groups, there are a total of N plus R minus 1 taken R minus 1 solutions. Of course, if we understand the idea clearly, we need not uh, memorize the formula shown. Next, let's talk about how we can apply this to integer equations. Please. The question we, could, we should consider is, how many non-negative integer solutions are there to the equation x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus and so on up to x sub n is equal to r? In terms of an integer equation, the first is illustration is equivalent to the integer equation x sub 1 plus x sub 2, where x sub 1 is the number of blue stars and x sub 2 is the number of red stars. Of course, based on the previous result, we know that there are four solutions to this one, namely 3, 0, 2, 1, 1, 2, and 0, 3. Similarly, the second illustration translates to the integer equation x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus x sub 3 is equal to 3, where the new variable x sub 3 represents the number of green stars. By treating the x sub i in the integer equation as a set of stars, the objective essentially translates to finding the number of possible groupings of r stars into n groups. Now by the stars and bars technique, the total number of solutions is therefore equal to r plus n minus 1 taken n minus 1. It is important to highlight though that the formula shown only applies if we are dealing with a set of non-negative integer solutions. That is, we are, we are allowing the use of 0 as part of the solution. Otherwise, the previous discussion should be adjusted and the stars and bars formula uh, shown will be uh, slightly different. In the next sample problems, we will discuss how to adjust the technique accordingly. Now let's work on some sample problems to see how to apply the stars and bars technique. For the first sample problem, how many non-negative integer solution blah 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 r plus o plus b plus blah 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 is equal to 27? Since we are looking for non-negative solutions, the solution is pretty straightforward using stars and bars technique. We have 27 stars to be grouped into 6 with the groups being R, O, B, L, E, and S. By stars and bars, there are a total of 27 plus 6 minus 1, taken 6 minus 1, or simply 32 taken 5 solutions. Can you imagine listing all those solutions? Yeah. Anyway, moving on to the next problem. In how many ways can you cast 8 votes to 10 candidates if you can vote for a candidate more than once? Although not stated, it's fair to assume that we are allowed not to vote a candidate since we cannot vote all of them at once anyway. Therefore, the stars and bars technique can be applied straightforwardly. We are essentially grouping 8 stars into 10 groups. By the stars and bars, the number of groupings is equal to 8 plus 10 minus 1 taken 10 minus 1 
or simply 10 take, uh, 17 take 10 9. Of course, if you are a little confused, you, you can still work on this by writing first the integer equation, which is x plus one, x sub 1 plus x sub 2 until x sub 10 is equal to 8. For the third problem, how many positive integer solutions to the equation v plus w plus x plus y plus z is equal to 20 are there? Unlike the previous two, the stars and bars formula cannot be directly used since we are dealing with positive solutions, which implies that zero cannot be part of any solution. This is what I have em emphasized earlier. A workaround to this problem is to, re to rewrite each of the variables in terms of a dummy variable, say the prime variables v prime, w prime up to z prime. Suppose v is equal to v prime plus 1, w is equal to w, price, w prime plus 1, and so on. With this substitution, if we allow the prime variables to be at the 0, then the original variables will necessarily be greater than 0, and hence positive. Now the equations. The equation becomes w, uh, v prime plus 1 plus blah 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 and so on is equal to 20, which simplifies to v prime plus w prime plus and so on until z prime is equal to 15. Again, by stars and bars, the total number of solutions is equal to 15 plus 5 minus 1 taken 5 minus 1 is equal to 19 taken 4. For other problems, the introduction of the prime variables uh, often helps. If the variables need to be greater than 2 instead, then we use the substitution v is equal to v prime plus 2. On the other hand, if the variables can be as low as negative 3, then we use the substitution v is equal to v prime plus v prime minus 3. Lastly, for our last sample problem, how many three-digit numbers are there whose digit sum is 5? Let's denote the number as x, y, z, where x is the hundreds digit, y is the tens digit, and z is the units digit. Since the digit sum is 5, then x plus y plus z is equal to 5. For this one, we shouldn't use stars and bars immediately since the value of x cannot be 0. Otherwise, the number will be a two-digit number. Similar to the previous problem, we use the substitution x is equal to x prime plus 1. The equation then becomes x prime plus 1 plus y plus z is equal to 5, which simplifies to x prime plus y plus z is equal to 4. By stars and bars, the number of solutions is equal to 4 plus 3 minus 1 taken 3 minus 1 or equal 6 taken 2. When dealing with digit sum related problems, I recommend to always be mindful of the first digit. So that's the end of the discussion. I hope you learned something and I just have to note that the problems I discussed in this video are quite the basic applications of stars and bars. I will try to work on the advanced problems and put it in another video. For the time being, I say thank you for watching and if you like this video, please like and share and subscribe for more content.